All right, let's get started with Lesson 5, Bond Enthalpies. We're going to continue our discussion on changes in enthalpies of a system by looking at what is known as bond enthalpies in this lesson. Now, it's something that's very important to understand is that the process in breaking chemical bonds is endothermic. That is, energy is required to break chemical bonds. Energy is required to break a chemical bond and therefore it must be an endothermic process. Now what I want to do is take a moment and define the term bond enthalpy. This is a term that you need to have down, in other words know the definition for for the quiz and for the test. So the bond enthalpy is the energy needed to break one mole of bonds in gaseous molecules under standard conditions. Alright, so in order for bond enthalpies to work, you have to have all substances in the gas state. And we're looking about the amount of energy required to break exactly one mole of the molecules in that gas state under what we call standard conditions. Now, we're going to discuss standard conditions a lot more in the next lesson, lesson six. And so for now, just note that uh, bond enthalpies take place under standard conditions, and we'll uh, define those more in lesson six. So it's important to learn uh, the definition of bond enthalpy. A common error, common error is to fail to indicate that all species have to be in the gas state when stating this definition. So make sure that's included in your definition. All right, so what I have is a table here that lists the bond energies of several um, bond um, structures that are going on. For instance, um, we have a bond between a carbon and a hydrogen. This is the first one here, a CH bond. And to break this bond, it would require 413 kilojoules of energy per mole of CH bonds. To break a mole of C, a uh, single bond of two carbons, it would require 348 kilojoules to mole. So all of these values here is the amount of energy needed to break these particular bonds. All right. So a table like this can be very useful and handy. Um, you will always be given bond enthalpy values or a table like this, so you never have to memorize them at all. I do want to point out one bond enthalpy for oxygen in this table. To break a mole of oxygen, which has the Lewis-Dot structure of this, remember um, oxygen is diatomic, it has a double bond between the two oxygens. It's required to break that bond. Um, it would take 495 kilojoules per mole. All right. Okay, you kind of get the idea of how this table works. And so if they ever ask you what is the bond enthalpy for a particular bond, just go ahead and take a look at this table and look at the value. For instance, one more time, if you wanted to break a uh, fluorine fluorine single bond right here it would require 155 kilojoules per mole of energy to break that bond all right now the process of making a bond though is exothermic so when we want to actually make a bond um, it's an exothermic process that is energy is released when a bond is formed um, so bond breaking requires energy, but bond making releases energy. Now, the same, this is what's really cool, and this is based on the first law of thermodynamics. The same amount of energy required to break a bond is also released when a bond is formed. Okay, so that goes back to our table again. So let's... Let's let's look at the fact that we wanted to let's go back to our um, oxygen here. Um, I'm gonna use a pen here. Oxygen. It would require four hundred and ninety-five kilojoules of energy to break that bond, right? Well, 
if we wanted to make that bond, it would require exactly the same amount of energy. So to make that double bond, it would require 495 kilojoules of energy. And that's what it's referring to. All right. So going back to this then, um, bond making involves bringing atoms together, make which are attracted by an electrostatic force of attraction. This process will then decrease the enthalpy of a reaction. Now, we can use bond enthalpies as a way to determine the delta H of a reaction. Now, we learned um, in unit four, or lesson four, that we can use calorimetry to determine the delta H values of a reaction, but we can also use bond enthalpies as well to do this by using this equation right here. And this equation is one of those equations that you just simply need to, to memorize. So let's go through this equation, what it means, and then we're going to use this equation to practice determining the enthalpy change for a reaction using bond en energies. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this equation, and we have some an interesting sign there. That sign right there is known as sigma. And sigma means sum of. So we're going to take the sum of the b um, bond enthalpies. That's what this is, is the bond enthalpies. So you're going to take the sum of the bond enthalpies, which we can actually get from our table that we've looked at. And so the amount of energy required to break all the chemical bonds in a reaction, and we're going to subtract that from the sum of all the bond enthalpies of forming bonds. So essentially you can think of bonds broken, this is the reactants because we have to break all the bonds in the reactant side, minus the bonds formed or the energy released when a bond is formed to form the products. And if you can do this, the sum of the bond enthalpies of the bonds broken minus the sum of the enthalpies um, of the bonds formed, you are able to find the delta H for a reaction at standard conditions because all of these bond enthalpies are at standard conditions. Now, how do we know we're at standard conditions? Well, we use a little funny degree sign. It's called a naught, actually. So this is called delta H naught of a reaction. So anytime you see a little naught there, that means that we're at standard conditions. Okay, so make note of that. And, and again, in lesson um, six of this unit, we'll talk a little bit more about that. All right, so now that we un understand the equation, let's apply this equation um, into some real example problems. Those example problems are in your notes. Now you're gonna have to flip back and forth between these example problems and your table um, bond enthalpy tables to solve these problems then, okay? Okay, so here we go. We're going to uh, do this first one. This is um, 1A, and we have a reaction of hydrogen gas plus Cl2 gas produces two um, HCl gases, okay? Now, what I would do in solving bond enthalpy reactions is start out with drawing the Lewis structures. And that it will give you an idea of what are the bonds that need to be broken in the bonds that need to be formed. So I have hydrogen here, and the Lewis structure would look like this, plus a chlorine gas, and that's going to produce two HCLs. So again, I'm just drawing the Lewis structure. Okay. Now, we know then this bond has to be broken and that bond has to be broken um, to free up those elements so that they can rearrange themselves to form um, our products. And so we're going to form two HCl bonds, single bonds there, okay, over on our reactant side, or product side, sorry. All right, so now how do we relate um, bond enthalpies to calculating delta H of the reaction? Well, Delta H of the reaction under standard conditions is equal to, if you look at the equation, 
the sum of the bond enthalpies of the bonds broken. So how much energy? Go back to your table and ask yourself how much energy is required to break this bond. If you look at it, it would be 436 kilojoules of energy. All right. Now we're going to add that amount of energy to the amount of energy required to break this bond, that single bond between those two CLs. And if you look at the table of that, you would find that it is 242 kilojoules. So because of the equation, we have to add these together. These are the sum, this is the sum of the energy right here, the sum of the energy of the bonds broken. Okay, that's how much energy that I need to break all of the bonds for the reactant molecules. All right, now I'm going to subtract this by the value of the energy required to make our single bond between the H and the CL. Okay, so if you use the table, you would find that it would take 400 and 31 kilojoules per mole of energy to m that would be released when that, those bonds are formed. But we have two of them, one and two, so we need to multiply this value by two. Okay? So when we do the multiplication and then subtract this from our bonds broken, we would get a delta H of reaction value at standard conditions of negative 184 kilojoules per mole. All right? So I've gone through this problem, but you really need to go back and take a look at the table yourself and see if you can come up with these same values that I have. All right? And again, I just got these values from that enthalpy table in your notes. All right, let's go to B, the next one. Okay, here we're forming water. So again, we're going to start out with creating the Lewis dot structures. So hydrogen and we got two of them, so we got to break two hydrogen bonds, plus oxygen, and we're going to form two water molecules here. So here's the Lewis structures for those two water molecules that are produced. All right. So again, we got to break this bond, and we got to break these bonds. Okay. So if we look up in our bond enthalpy table again, we would find that delta H. of the reaction as standard conditions is equal to again the amount of energy required to break all the bonds so to break a HH bond single bond it would require 436 kilojoules of energy all right and we got two of them that we're breaking so we got to multiply that by two and we're going to add that to the amount of energy required to break that double bond between the um, oxygen, and we know that that is 495 kilojoules, if we look that up on the table, okay? We're going to subtract all of that from the bonds that are formed um, by creating the two water molecules. And so to create a OH um, bond, single bond, OH bond, if we look that up in the table, that would be 400 and 63 kilojoules per mole. Since we're going to form four of them, one, two, three, and four, we're going to multiply this value by four. And after we add up all the energy required to break the bonds, remember that's the endothermic process to break the bonds, and subtract that from the amount of energy released when a bond is formed, for this reaction you would find the delta H of the reaction at standard conditions is equal to 485 kilojoules per mole. So in the end, the delta H is positive for this reaction. So this overall is an endothermic process. I believe the one in A, you got a negative value. And so the example problem in 1A was an exothermic process. And this is an endothermic. All right. Getting the idea here, let's do one more, just for argument's sake here. Um, really quickly, uh, we got a combustion reaction here. So I'm going to draw the loose structure here. You can fill that in with your notes too. Loose structure of methane plus oxygen. Ooh, we have two of them. 
two oxygens produces uh, carbon dioxide plus two water molecules. Now when you do this on the test, I would really encourage you to really write out these Lewis dot structures and figure out what the bonds that have to be broken, the total number, and, I, and it'll make these problems so much easier for you. So let's go ahead, the delta H of this reaction, standard conditions, is equal to, okay, so to break a CH bond, if I look at the table, it would require 413 kilojoules. And I'm going to br break four of those. So that's one, two, three, and four that need to be broken. We're going to add that to the oxygen bonds, those double bonds that need to be broken, which is uh, two of those, so it's going to be 495. All right. And we're going to subtract this. This is the bonds broken minus the bonds formed. Um, and we need to bond or create some double bonds between the oxygen and the carbon and that would be in the table 799 so we're going to lose 799 kilojoules of energy when we form those bonds and we're going to make two of them right two of those we're going to add that we're going to come down here we're going to add that to our water and so we're going to create one two three four OH bonds and so again as the previous problem that's 463 kilojoules multiplied by 2 or 4 sorry yeah got 4 of those all right and so we put brackets okay what does that equal we take the total sum of the bonds broken minus the total sum of the bonds formed we would get delta H for this reaction is equal to negative 700 kilojoules per mole. It's a lot of energy coming out of there in that combustion reaction. And again, it's negative delta H, therefore this is an exothermic reaction. So this combustion reaction, which is no surprise, is exothermic, which is indicated by this. So bond enthalpies is another way besides calorimetry in order to determine the amount of potential energy change of a system, a reaction. All right. So get used to this. Um, you have two more problems in your notes. Why don't you work those out on your on your own, and we'll check the answers in class. Um, get ready to uh, prepare for a quiz over this. Um, I don't think this is too hard, but if you do have some questions, come and see me, and we'll we'll chat about it. Okay. So that is it for this uh, video.